My name is Amata and in this Red Gaming Tech video I'm here with yet another combination video but today we have all Intel all the time. And our first thing for today is a leaked roadmap which gives us a bit of a peek and confirms the Z370, B360 and Z390 platforms of course. This is with the usual caveat that being is this chart even real but if it is real, it does confirm the Coffee Lake S series naming scheme. Now obviously we've already discussed previously that AMD kind of yoinked the B350 naming and obviously Intel are going to be releasing theirs as a B360. Now the Z390 raises a lot of interesting questions. Is it going to replace the Z370? Is it going to be a proper successor? to that very same board? Is it going to be mainly for Coffee Lake and the other Coffee Lake boards we've seen just kind of like for adoption? Is it going to have the same socket as those? Tough to say, but obviously it does raise some interesting questions. Moving swiftly on however to something from the i9-7920X. As today Intel announced the availability of this high-end HEDD processor and of course it's going to be made available in the LGA2066 package and obviously it's going to be shocking to no one ever based on Intel X299. It's going to be pretty pricey at $1,199 and that's quite the premium over the 7900X, a $200 premium to be exact. Of course it is based upon the same silicon as Skylake X, that being Force 14nm with a 140 watt TDP. Other details are a clock speed of 2.9 GHz with a boost of 4.3 and a turbo boost max of 4.4 GHz. As for the cache it only has 1 MB dedicated L2 cache per core but a shared L3 cache of 16.5 MB. And of course the RAM question is answered with of course DDR4 and supports up to 128 gigabytes which is obscene to say the least. But we are moving swift and sure like a sparrow today and we're moving on to our next item which is the i7-8700K as prices for that very same chip have been spotted in Germany and this one is thanks to Guru3D. Now of course we've seen other prices for Coffee Lake but obviously this gives us a little bit of a different picture, a more complete picture as it were. And it does show that Coffee Lake is going to be a bit more expensive in comparison to both the i5 and i7 lines. And you can see a, a rather helpful chart as well as a price listing on screen. Where of course you can get a look-see at the prices for yourself. But for those of you perhaps listening on mobile or what have you, the i7 8700K obviously your mileage may vary when it comes to this, you know, VAT, blah, 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 blah. But still, it's 389 euros in comparison to the 273 euros for the i5 8600K. And obviously the i3 8350K is even cheaper at 189 euros. Now, obviously, there are more chips in between those ones that I just mentioned. That kind of gives you a little bit of a sort of spread. And obviously, you can see the full chart and price listing a few seconds ago on screen if perhaps you want to see what else you're going to have to cough up if perhaps you're interested in upgrading to Coffee Lake. So for those of you in the EU this is what you're looking at and as per usual you could argue that the price is a little bit high but you know that tends to be the way with Intel but that is fairly usual sort of pricing for them and their newer chips so I'm not really shocked to my, to my calls, I'm not clutching my pearls but many are going to argue this is a touch high, but obviously that's just how the cookie tends to crumble, especially when it comes to the latest and greatest that Intel puts out. Obviously, they're not the only ones, and, but we are talking about Intel currently. So, Last thing on our list is Geekbench. Yes, and it is a score for the i7-8700K, to stay on that topic for once. And I have also managed to find a comparison between that and the 7700K as well. However, as you can see on screen, it has a single core score of 5,773 and a multi-core score of 24,260. 
And if you keep your eyes on the screen, you will see me scrolling through all the results on the various tests that that Geekbench performs. And the picture is pretty rosy, especially when you can, again, compare it to that of the 7700K, which should be on screen right about now. So it just gives you a little bit of a picture of the jump in performance in the various areas that we have seen. A little bit of a perform uh, performance increase in single core, but obviously the biggest increase is in the multi-core score, which is hardly surprising to say the least. You know, most people are going to be using their chips in the multi-core flavor, but of course single core performance can be very, very important. And it's always good to know when, of course, deciding whether or not you want to spend several hundred pounds, dollars or euros, whatever it happens to be. Now, obviously, the differences are minimal in some areas, and there are even some areas where the earlier chip does win out, but obviously, you've got differences in the rigs. This, obviously, these two tests weren't performed on the same rig or by the same person, but you can see them all there in the video, and of course, the links to the comparison, as well as just the 8700K results, will be in the description below if you want to go check them out yourself, and of course, you are more than welcome to go check out other results on Geekbench, just stick to Geekbench 4 and you'll be able to see for yourself some of the results that people have tested on both PC and Mac. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed this whirlwind tour of the Intel tidbits that I managed to get from the internet today. Thank you very much for watching. Your support is highly appreciated. As always, do like and subscribe if you haven't done so already to help out a great deal. And if you don't mind giving our Patreon a look-see, that would be most appreciated. Patreon.com forward slash RedGamingTech. Obviously, if you... If you can't donate, that's of course absolutely fine. Even your likes and subscribes help out a great deal. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.